Welcome to The Heart of Health Live. There's a place for modern medicine in your life. Learn to use it correctly by getting your toughest questions answered on today's broadcast. Discover modern medicine's strengths and weaknesses. Lifestyle medicine opens the door to optimum health and healing. How you live and what you eat can profoundly affect mind and body. Learn simple solutions to complex problems. God provides the ultimate healing we all desire. He wants us healthy and happy. We just need to understand His plan for our lives and live accordingly. And now, live from Studio 1A in Chattanooga, Tennessee, here's your Heart of Health host, Dr. James Markham. Welcome, welcome everyone. I'm glad you join us tonight on Heart of Health Live, where we want you to be part of the program. Our program tonight, we have Dr. Dennis Thompson. He's handled about every type of medical problem that you can imagine. He works with the young, he works with the old, he works in emergency room, he's worked in hospitals, out of hospitals. He can answer your question tonight. He's not going to charge anything. It's going to be free advice. So we want you to pick up the phone, 855-644-3278. Now tonight, we're going to try to focus on men's health. But we'll take just about any question you can throw our way. So if you have a man in the house that might be making excuses like, I'm too busy to see the doctor. I will get better for tomorrow. I'm as strong as an ox. Me? Sick? You've heard them all. Or why should I go to the doctor? I don't trust them. They're trying to kill me. If you might have someone in your house that's doing this, or you might be a man that doesn't want to go to the doctor, where well, you can sneak in your question tonight. You don't even have to give your real name. You can just have your question answered. Dr. Dennis Thompson and I will keep a secret, and we'll give you a great answer tonight. Um, we want to prevent a catastrophe, and a lot of times when you see a doctor early, you can pick up something early before it becomes a, a problem. We can prevent disease, and also some things you might be doing, simple things might improve your health quite a bit. So we're also going to be talking about the leading causes of death in men, why men should see a doctor. We're going to talk about things like prostate, things about like the big word impotence that everyone stays away from. We're going to talk about some screening tests that men might benefit. Now I know most of the time that women watch this program. So if you're there and you want your husband to hear why they should go to a doctor or listen to a doctor or take care of their body, think about this. Most men spend more time worrying about their car or worrying about the ball game than they do worried about their own health. But guess what our greatest asset is? Our greatest asset is our bodies. You only get one, so you want to take care of it. It's a machine too. It needs some maintenance. So we want you to give us a call tonight. Our phone number is 855-644-3278. You can go to our website, heartwiseministry.org, or even join us on Facebook. We're going to be right back and introduce you to Dr. Dennis Thompson after this short break. Stay with us. The Heart of Health Live will return in just a moment. The ultimate prescription by cardiologist Dr. James Markham is taking the nation by storm. People everywhere are learning what living a healthy life is all about. If you're happy living a drug-filled, pain-filled, mundane existence, this book is definitely not for you. In this book, Dr. Markham dives into modern medicine's strengths and weaknesses and explains how lifestyle choices can significantly impact your health. To get your copy, visit Barnes & Noble or shop online at Amazon.com. Hello, I'm Dr. Tim Jennings with your Mental Health Minutes. Are you pregnant or thinking of becoming pregnant? Do you want to ensure your child will have the healthiest brain possible? Then avoid all alcohol because as little as one glass of wine per week alters brain development and is associated with behavior and emotion problems. Avoid smoking. Children born to mothers who smoked had higher rates of learning and behavior problems and psychotic disorders. Take omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3s promote healthy brains and higher IQ. And watch out for depression. Untreated depression is associated with delayed fetal growth and altered brain development. However, antidepressants can increase miscarriage rates, contribute to smaller fetal heads, and slow growth in the newborn. If depressed, consider transcranial magnetic stimulation, the only FDA-cleared drug-free treatment for depression with no risk to the fetus. To be smart requires a healthy brain, so be smart, do right, and make your child bright. To learn more about mental health, visit comeandreason.com. 
Imagine a classroom. A classroom with no boundaries. A classroom where reenacting a book is an English class. And repairing a motor is a math lesson. A classroom where caring for horses is biology. This is our classroom. At Bachman Academy, 6th to 12th graders with ADHD, dyslexia, and other language-based learning differences are provided a language-rich, hands-on program of study. With an average of five students per teacher, Bachman students receive more attention and have more time to learn while using their own learning strengths. Now, imagine your child in this classroom. To learn more about Bachman Academy, visit our website at www.bachmanacademy.org. Bachman Academy, tapping potential one person at a time. You've got questions, we've got answers on the Heart of Health Live. Welcome back. Well, thanks everyone for joining us. And if you're just joining us today on our program, we're talking about men's health. And our phone number is 855-644-3278. Also, you can join us on Facebook. You can be our friend on Facebook. You can also go to our website, that's heartwiseministries.org, and leave your question if you're too shy to leave it on the air. Dr. Thompson, we want to welcome you to Heart of Health Live. Thank you for having me. And tell us, what got you interested in the practice of medicine? How did you end up doing all these different things in your life? Well, um, my life has been a journey. I had decided that I was going to teach uh, secondary education and mm -hmm. I got my teacher certification. Um, subsequently moved to Texas, did some construction, but had always wanted to be a physician. So I took a circuitous route, and, but finally uh, went to uh, osteopathic school uh -huh. down, in, down in Texas. Okay. And I hear you're also a part-time farmer now. Yes. I so just got a little piece of land and we're planting some blueberry bushes. Okay. Well, we've got a lot of good questions to come in, and everyone understands that we don't enter into relationships. This is just general medical knowledge, but a lot of people don't know the basics, and a lot of people now don't have insurance. They don't know where to get answers from. You know, the internet, who, do, who knows what to believe there? And even sometimes it's hard even in your own medical community to know, you know, when one person says another thing. So we just want to help you answer your questions and to serve you the best we can. And the first question has come in from the internet. And Dr. Thompson, it says, at what age should a man see a doctor? And it said, should he even go even if he feels well? Well, um, it's very important in the early formative years that they see a physician, male or female, as babies as they grow. So certainly throughout the first year or two okay. of life that requires regular ongoing care. Then um, usually there's some illnesses, some colds, that type of thing where they would seek episodic care at least uh, during the school years. Uh, actually the schools require uh, regular physical examination for sport a sporting activities and things. Really the problem comes in the teen years mm -hmm. and um, the American Medical Association back in 1920 said that they should have an annual physical. That has actually do, is not evidence-based medicine. It was an opinion okay. at that time, and so that's changed over time. My feeling is that from about 12 years old to maybe 20 years old, every two to three years for those children is appropriate. Then in the 20s and 30s, maybe every two to three years, but then past that it should be at least every other year to have an examination. Okay. Um, my nephew, as an example, um, at 26 years old, developed lymphoma recently. 26. 26 years old. Mm -hmm. And so if he hadn't noticed or felt a, a nodule on his shoulder, we would not know. And certainly that's a very treatable condition if it's caught early. Okay. Well, we're going to talk more as we go along about what a wellness exam is. But we have a question that's come in. And Lynette, you're on with Dr. Ten Dr. Dennis Thompson. What's your comment or question, Lynette? Are you with us? Lynette, are you there? I think Lynette's on now. Lynette, can you hear me? Yes, I can. What, what's your question for Dr. Thompson this evening? Well, my husband has been prescribed medication for high cholesterol. And he's not taking it on a regular basis because he said it makes his muscles ache and um, it makes him urinate often. But um, I've been doing some research and um, I've heard that it could also um, 
kind of hinder an erection, and I'm wondering if that might be the real reason he's not wanting to take it? Well, it would be unusual for cholesterol medicine uh, to create impotence or inability to obtain an erection. Um, however, it is known that the statin-type medications uh, for cholesterol can cause some muscle achiness. Um, oftentimes, I see that people are underhydrated as well. If he's drinking enough water, not drinking too much caffeine, that can go a long ways towards uh, alleviating some of the muscle aches. He, uh. should, he should get with his physician, and they would better be able to maybe change the dosage or the type of medicine. Certain of the cholesterol medicines have a higher predilection to have muscle achiness as well. Uh, I think it's important because cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death in America, and as a secondary prevention, I think managing cholesterol is very important. Okay, great. Thank you. That makes a lot of sense. He drinks a lot of caffeine and not enough water, so that's a good start. Okay. Yes, it would be. Well, thank you for your call, Annette, and also I would make sure if, if the symptoms don't go away to keep getting follow-up, okay? We're talking with Dennis Thompson on Heart of Health Live. Our phone number is 855-644-3278. And you can join us live after this short break with Dr. Dennis Thompson. Stay with us. The Heart of Health Live will return in just a moment. for modern medicine, but that's not enough. There's a place for lifestyle, but that's not enough. The real truth in medicine, the real truth in healing comes from that relationship with the Heavenly Father. That relationship can show us the balance. When to use modern medicine, when to use lifestyle, and to use it for the right reasons. Well, this book gives the solution to the healthcare dilemma. It answers the question, why am I sick? How do I get better? And how can I have ultimate healing? I'm Dr. James Markham, and I talk to patients every day who want to know the truth in healthcare. On our website, heartwiseministries.org, you can have your questions answered. You can read my blog where I talk about interesting and controversial subjects in medicine. You might choose to go to the radio or television sections and learn more about all sorts of health topics. Take the time and go to heartwiseministries.org. ways to keep kids active and healthy. Works every time. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov. You've got questions, we've got answers on the Heart of Health Live. Welcome back. You know, I love that in the opening, Dr. Thompson. You've got questions. We will try to give answers. Yes. <laughs> because you know, there's many different ways of looking at that cup in front of you. Now, we were talking a little bit about, should a man go see a doctor? I think the answer is yes. Yes. Now, even if he feels well, I guess the answer to that is yes. Yes. And the reason for that is to? Do a physical exam. And actually, sometimes in preventive, what I call primary prevention, you want to avoid a disease from ever happening. For instance, immunizations, mm -hmm. um, regular aerobic exercise, drinking enough water, getting adequate sleep. That would be considered primary prevention to avoid problems from, from developing. Um, 
Others you want to try and catch in an early phase so that you can treat it and reduce the amount of uh, what we call morbidity and mortality, illness or death. Um, so when you go to see your physician, he should do a very detailed history to find out what your family risk factors are, uh, the type of life that you are living and maybe encourage okay. you on some lifestyle changes and also to do some blood work screening um, and do a careful physical examination from head to toe, as they would say. Now, do they still do the, you know, one exam I don't do anymore is a rectal exam. Do they still do that anymore? They do on occasion, um, but that brings up another issue that we'll probably get into later, and that is prostate okay. health. Uh, okay. Usually that is as a result of screening for prostate cancer. And I remember medical school, they used to, you know, you turn your head and cough and that yes. kind of stuff. Well, that would be more for a hernia. Yeah, yeah, evaluating a hernia. Do you find that the, the art of touch and the art of communication is sort of in, in our technological world sort of being lost? I absolutely do. Um, right now they're trying to develop a computer that will be able to diagnose. Uh, the government is uh, investing quite a bit of money apparently in that. I think that the, um, the, in the context of what I would call a healing encounter, the ability to sit down with somebody that you trust, that you have developed a relationship with, that is the physician. I think that that's a very revered um, relationship that, that can develop over time. Yeah. So I guess we're finishing up that first question that came on the internet. Man should see a doctor, should he go if he feels well? And you know, 50 seems to be a magic number. It seems some of the chronic illnesses or the cancers, they seem to increase with age. Um, Therefore, at 50 years old, certain things like getting, getting colon checked out, possibly the prostate checked out, but even earlier than that, uh, recommendations are to screen for diabetes and high blood pressure and high cholesterol much earlier, even into the 20s and 30s. Wow, wow. Now, do you find in your practice, do many men between the ages of, let's say, 30 and 50 show up, or do they mainly show up when they have a problem? Usually they show up when they have a problem, and in my practice, when they come in for a respiratory infection, I attempt to do some preventive care at the same time because you kind of have to catch them when you can. Less than, uh, or almost a third of patients don't even have a primary care physician or a, a physician that they would call their doctor. Wow. And um, up to 60% don't go on even a semi-regular basis. Well, you know, almost everyone has someone that takes care of their car. You know, and that, that blows me, and yet your body, no, one, no one's there helping take care of your body at all. That's crazy. Getting a tune-up for prevention, I think, is very important. And also someone that actually knows you and that can, you know, know when there's serial changes over time. Yes. Um, I never understood until I got into the practice of medicine just being able to look at somebody. You can look in the room and you can all, uh, when you meet them, and you can almost tell, is there something serious going on yeah. or is this not as serious? So there's, you know, so it's, so would you say it's better to go to an older doctor, a younger doctor, or the experience, you know, the experience counts for something? The ideal is um, a very well-trained physician just coming out of residency that has a couple years of experience. There you go. They're with the most current information. Uh, physicians, however, they have a lot of continuing medical education that they're required to do on a yearly basis. You know, I had a patient that came in to see me because they were having chest pain not too long ago. And they were having chest pain because basically someone hit them in the chest, okay? They were rough housing, someone hit them chest. But as part of our exam, we do a chest x-ray. And lo and behold, that chest x-ray showed a spiculated lesion in the left upper lobe that turned out to be cancer because this gentleman was also smoking. You know, you just never know, you know, and just because you, when you start looking for things, you know, sometimes you pick up things very early. And this gentleman did very well because, you know, he picked up something very because early. Because it was caught early By accident. Enough. By accident. So you found an incidental loma. Yeah, incidental loma. <laughs> um, we're talking with Dr. Dennis Thompson. We want to invite you to bring in your questions, 855-644-3278. After break, we're going to talk something that's dear to the heart of many men, and that's what happens if I become impotent? What can I do? What can be done to help? Um, so stay with us or go to our website, heartwiseministries.org. Um, we're going to be right back after this short break. The Heart of Health Live will return in just a moment. The Ultimate Prescription by cardiologist Dr. James Markham is taking the nation by storm. People everywhere are learning what living a healthy life is all about. 
If you're happy living a drug-filled, pain-filled, mundane existence, this book is definitely not for you. In this book, Dr. Markham dives into modern medicine's strengths and weaknesses and explains how lifestyle choices can significantly impact your health. To get your copy, visit Barnes & Noble or shop online at Amazon.com. Imagine a classroom. A classroom with no boundaries. A classroom where reenacting a book is an English class. And repairing a motor is a math lesson. A classroom where caring for horses is biology. This is our classroom. At Bachman Academy, 6th to 12th graders with ADHD, dyslexia, and other language-based learning differences are provided a language-rich, hands-on program of study. With an average of five students per teacher, Bachman students receive more attention and have more time to learn while using their own learning strengths. Now, imagine your child in this classroom. To learn more about Bachman Academy, visit our website at www.bachmanacademy.org. Bachman Academy, tapping potential one person at a time. Have you ever heard things about God that didn't make sense? Have you ever thought that science and scripture cannot be reconciled? Have you heard ideas about God that scare you? Or are you just tired and confused? If you want answers to complex problems, if you want a testable, evidence-based understanding of God and the world around you, an understanding in which the Bible and science harmonize to reveal the reality that God is love all the time, then Come and Reason Ministries is for you. Hi, I'm Dr. Tim Jennings, board-certified psychiatrist, and Come and Reason Ministries is dedicated to helping you learn to discern, to stimulate you to think, to help hone and refine your ability to know the right from the wrong, the healthy from the unhealthy, and teach you how to experience healing of your mind, body, and relationships here and now. If you would like an evidence-based approach to knowing God, then visit us online at comeandreason.com. You've got questions, we've got answers on the Heart of Health Live. Welcome back. Welcome back to Heart of Health Live, and we have a question that I think every man would want to be interested in, and that's the topic of impotence, and women probably be interested in the topic too. And this question, Dr. Thompson says, um, as I'm 45 and impotent. Um, and for people that don't know what the word impotent is, means they're unable to you know, have an erection, they're unable to you know, physically do what a man does. He says, I've been embarrassed to go to see someone. Is there something simple I could do, or is it all in the mind? So how would you approach this problem if a person came to you with a similar problem in the office? Well, in regards to it's all in your mind, the tradition had been that 90% of impotence was actually mental. Okay. That's incorrect. Okay. It's the opposite. 90% is organic, and certainly something can be done about now, now it. Now, what's organic mean? Um, there are a medical condition, okay. Okay. or possibly even some medications can cause okay. inability to obtain an erection as well. Um, so it is a very treatable condition the vast majority of the time. There's medicines for it, there's mechanical devices, there's actually, uh, if you had to resort to surgery, um, that can help correct the problem. First of all, you would want to have a, a good general examination and make sure that there's not a, another medical condition, such as high blood pressure. Okay. Um, there's a common misconception that blood pressure, because it's not causing me to have any symptoms, is not a problem. That's not true. It's damaging the arteries, okay. will increase the risk of stroke by seven times, one of the major risk factors for heart disease, second leading cause of renal failure. So high blood pressure does have effect, and because it's a vascular situation with an erection, it's affecting the blood vessels as well. Okay. So. so. So what are other things organic? Would you check hormone levels or things like that? Or Usually the new rage right now seems to be testosterone okay. in the anti-aging medicine realm. <clears throat> and testosterone can be low, but more typically the testosterone would be affiliated with reduced libido. That is not having interest um, in intimacy. And so testosterone can be a treatment for impotence, but not typically. Okay. Now, so, so when a person comes in, they get a full physical exam, and then let's say you can't find anything. And, you know, I guess sometimes you just can't find out what's causing it? That's true. How often does that happen? Um, 
probably 50-50. Okay. And, but then there continues to be the ability to treat. Everybody's heard of the Viagra, right. the little blue pill. Uh, there's other medicines, Levitra, Cialis, now, uh, now Staxin. Can, can everyone take those, or are there some people that have to be careful with those? You have to be careful. Um, one of the screening tests that I always ask men is if they can walk up three or four flights of stairs without developing shortness of breath or chest pain. Okay. Because the blood vessels are dilated, and that's similar nitroglycerin. As a cardiologist, mm -hmm. you know a lot about that. When it yeah. dilates the arteries, you have to make sure that the heart is healthy enough. Yeah. Now, we don't so. let people take nitroglycerin and Viagra, one of those, because of the chance of them having you know, low blood pressure. Absolutely. And a warning that I typically will give is if you take uh, one of the medications for impotence, be certain that you tell everybody, because if they give you nitroglycerin on top of that, it can drop your blood pressure. And if you happen to be having a heart attack, that's not a good situation no. to be in. Now, how effective are those medicines, would you say, when you give them? You know, does anyone ever come back and say it didn't work at all? Yes, but I would say 75 to 80 percent of the time when we can't find a metabolic reason for the impotence, okay. the medication is effective. Good. At that point, there is um, other medicines that can be administered locally, including injection, um, or there's mechanical devices that can be of some assistance as well. Okay, so there's lots of different options a person might have. Yes, there is. Okay, so, so in your opinion, really, by the time they investigate this, there's no really reason really you should have that problem, just a very few people. Very rare that you can't do something for the impotence. Now, sometimes in my patients, when I get the older ones and they're on lots of medicines, sometimes I have to make a tough decision. Do I take the medicine back, which might be causing it, or do I, you know, it's a very hard decision sometimes. It is a very difficult decision, but certainly life is going to be very important. Yes. Um, and sometimes you can alter the medicines. Uh, some medicines are very renowned for having that as a side effect, and so if you can change those around a little bit, um, still obtain the benefits of the medication without the side effects, that's ideal. You know, there is a Greek study um, a few years ago that said that people that have normal relationships, that has a beneficial effect on the heart. So I've used that a long time, and like I said, I don't want to take anyone's reason for living away, because that's such a powerful force in life, and God made us to be this way, and when you take it away, the, the chemistry of depression might be worth, uh, worse. We're going to come back, and after the break, we have a question from Gene. Stay with us, Gene. We're going to be right back with Dr. Dennis Thompson. Our number here is 855-644-3278. You're watching The Heart of Health Live. The Heart of Health Live will return in just a moment. Have you ever heard things about God that didn't make sense? Have you ever thought that science and scripture cannot be reconciled? Have you heard ideas about God that scare you? Or are you just tired and confused? If you want answers to complex problems, if you want a testable, evidence-based understanding of God and the world around you, an understanding in which the Bible and science harmonize to reveal the reality that God is love all the time. Then Come and Reason Ministries is for you. Hi, I'm Dr. Tim Jennings, board certified psychiatrist, and Come and Reason Ministries is dedicated to helping you learn to discern, to stimulate you to think, to help hone and refine your ability to know the right from the wrong, the healthy from the unhealthy, and teach you how to experience healing of your mind body and relationships here and now. If you would like an evidence-based approach to knowing God, then visit us online at comeandreason.com. So here's a question. If you love Jesus, and I mean truly love him, people will notice, right? I mean, if Jesus is at the center of everything you do, people will have to notice. And that is exactly what Life Talk is all about. You see, at LifeTalk, our goal has always been to connect people to the true source of power, Jesus Christ. We know with Jesus at the center of our lives, nothing is impossible. for modern medicine, but that's not enough. There's a place for lifestyle, but that's not enough. 
The real truth in medicine, the real truth in healing comes from that relationship with the Heavenly Father. That relationship can show us the balance. When to use modern medicine, when to use lifestyle, and to use it for the right reasons. Well, this book gives the solution to the healthcare dilemma. It answers the question, why am I sick? How do I get better? And how can I have ultimate healing? You've got questions. We've got answers on the Heart of Health Live. Welcome back. Welcome back. We're talking to Dr. Dennis Thompson, who's probably seen it just about everything in his career, and we're glad he's shared his time with us. And we have a question right now from Gene calling from Cleveland. Gene, you're on with Dr. Dennis Thompson. What's your question or comment? I have a question regarding the hormone replacement. I think they're called pellets, and they're supposed to be based on them yams or sweet potatoes and just kind of wondered what your opinion is of that and if there are any side effects what they might be well i think that we're talking about women's hormone replacement with the yams is that correct uh well i've heard there's some for both men and women well i, I don't know if they're both based on the the sweet potatoes or the yams but i'm just wondering what your opinion was of that uh, for either sex okay well my understanding on the yams and I'm not aware that there is pellets that are inserted, but yams, I think, uh, have been purported to be a progesterone type of hormone. Um, and they're relatively weak. Uh, as with most herbal medicines, um, you, they're going to take a longer time to act. They tend to work more in prevention. Once a disease is established, my bias is that we should use the pharmaceuticals that we have available. Um, as far as hormone replacement pellets using yams, I'm not familiar with that at all. Uh, usually, okay. it's, for men, it's testosterone, and there are some implantable testosterone, and there's also some implantable estrogens for ladies. Okay, and the testosterone, what, um, do you have any opinion on the side effects of that? Well, or is, is it, do you think positively about it? I think if your testosterone is low and it improves the quality of life, I think it's very useful. Um, it is uh, a, an anabolic type of hormone. There's a, a wave that I will call anti-aging medicine, and some that are purporting to, in even in 80-year-olds, 80 80 -year to try and get a testosterone level equivalent to when they were in their 20s. I'm not sure that that's safe. One of the concerns mm -hmm. is, is prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, prostate cancer is very prevalent in men, and if you give somebody that has, that has prostate cancer testosterone, it's kind of like pouring kerosene on a fire to put it out. Um, it makes a testosterone, excuse me, it makes the prostate cancer much more aggressive. And one of the accepted treatments for prostate cancer is to block the testosterone to prevent the progression. So there's no evidence, and I have looked, I have not found any evidence that giving testosterone produces prostate cancer, but because it's so prevalent, you have to be very vigilant in screening for that. Additionally, it affects your hemoglobin hematocrit or your blood count as well as your cholesterol. And so you would want to have somebody following you very closely if that were the case and probably do some digital rectal exams, again, being aggressive in screening for the prostate cancer. Great. Thank you very much. Okay, All right. I hope that helped. Okay, good. It did. You know, that's very interesting because I had one patient that came to me that was impotent, a man, okay, and he carried about 150 extra pounds. And I said, listen, you know, why don't you try to lose weight because extra weight is estrogenic. You make estrogen, which can cause impotence. So he lost 60 pounds and boom, he was a new man. And also, women that carry extra weight, it's estrogenic and can cause blood clots and, you know, cancer risk. And so I'm very careful when I tell, you know, of course, with, with cardiologists, when estrogen and, you know, we're very careful when we say, you know, you have to always look at the risk and benefits of any treatment and you have to know the full picture before you start taking things. Yes. I view testosterone and men's hormone replacement similar to what it was for ladies several years ago. We felt that Hormone replacement in ladies was very safe. It lowered the cholesterol. And because ladies didn't have heart attacks nearly as commonly as men, that it must be protective. 
and then the Women's Health Initiative came, and after we looked backwards, we said, well, maybe that's not the case. It appears that it increases the risk of strokes and, and um, blood clots as well as heart attacks. We really don't know at this point what the testosterone will show in several years. Um, certainly, if it improves your quality of life, it can help with fatigue, it can help with libido, um, gives you more energy, and if it helped you to get up off the couch and become a little bit more active and then come off of the testosterone in the future, uh, I've had several men that did that when they lost some weight, the fat actually causes aromatization yeah. and therefore more estrogen, and it makes you look more like a lady because you have a higher percentage of estrogen. Yeah, so one of the treatments for that for impotence might be an exercise program, lose some weight, and, and you know, do that, you know, get it on a good diet. And we're talking with Dennis Thompson. We still have time for your question. I'm 855 644 3278. And after the break, we're going to start talking a little bit about the prostate. Don't go away. Um, we're going to be right back. The Heart of Health Live will return in just a moment. The Ultimate Prescription by cardiologist Dr. James Markham is taking the nation by storm. People everywhere are learning what living a healthy life is all about. If you're happy living a drug-filled, pain-filled, mundane existence, this book is definitely not for you. In this book, Dr. Markham dives into modern medicine's strengths and weaknesses and explains how lifestyle choices can significantly impact your health. To get your copy, visit Barnes & Noble or shop online at Amazon.com. In the small town of Elmira, New York, a boy was born into an all-American family. The odds of him achieving his dream in the fashion industry? One in 23 million. The odds of having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 88. I am Tommy Hilfiger, and my family is affected by autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. I'm Dr. James Markham, and I talk to patients every day who want to know the truth in healthcare. On our website, heartwiseministries.org, you can have your questions answered. You can read my blog where I talk about interesting and controversial subjects in medicine. You might choose to go to the radio or television sections and learn more about all sorts of health topics. Take the time and go to heartwiseministries.org. Hello, I'm Dr. Tim Jennings with your Mental Health Minutes. Are you pregnant or thinking of becoming pregnant? Do you want to ensure your child will have the healthiest brain possible? Then avoid all alcohol because as little as one glass of wine per week alters brain development and is associated with behavior and emotion problems. Avoid smoking. Children born to mothers who smoked had higher rates of learning and behavior problems and psychotic disorders. Take omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3s promote healthy brains and higher IQ. And watch out for depression. Untreated depression is associated with delayed fetal growth and altered brain development. However, antidepressants can increase miscarriage rates, contribute to smaller fetal heads, and slow growth in the newborn. If depressed, consider transcranial magnetic stimulation, the only FDA-cleared drug-free treatment for depression with no risk to the fetus. To be smart requires a healthy brain, so be smart, do right, and make your child bright. To learn more about mental health, visit comeandreason.com. You've got questions, we've got answers on the Heart of Health Live. Welcome back. Welcome back. I'm Dr. James Markham. We're here tonight with our special guest, Dr. Dennis Thompson. You can join us by giving us a call at 855-644-3278. If you're interested in what we're doing, you can go to our website. That's heartwiseministries.org, where we've archived old programs and where this program will be if you want to watch it again. You can also be our Facebook friend, and we want to encourage that because the social media is growing. And how many places can you go where they're not trying to sell you a product, they're not, there's no gimmick treatment involved where you just get good straight information from people that have had some training and some experience where you don't have to pay anything and we'll listen to you. And even if we don't know your answer, like that yams was a tough one, Dr. Thompson. Yes. Even if we don't know, we'll do some more research and come back next week with, with, with what we can find out. We'll research this because that's how we, we learn a lot more. Now, Dr. Thompson, we've talked so far about going to see a doctor. It's important for men to do that because um, doctors can pick up things. 
And we talked a little bit about impotence. That's dear to the heart of many and hormone replacement. But I'm curious, you know, what are some of the leading causes of death that men might worry about that they might need to see a doctor to help prevent? The leading cause of death is heart disease. Coronary artery disease is far and away number one. It has a higher incidence than the next four inclusive. Wow. Um, second leading cause of death is cancers of different types. Certain cancers are more aggressive. For instance, lung cancer is a leading cause of, of death. It's not the most prevalent cancer. Skin cancer is the most prevalent. But if that's addressed early on, and maybe that's because we can see a skin lesion changing and mm -hmm. get in with a physician and have it addressed. But lung cancer is the leading type of uh, cancer death. Um, then there's injuries. Okay. Um, unknown, probably leading cause of death in younger people is injuries. Um, sometimes it's a little humbling. The best thing that I can tell... Is that car accidents? Uh, car accidents, okay. homicides, suicides, falls from a roof, whatever mm -hmm. type, but it's, it's injuries and accidents. The most helpful thing that I can give a 25-year-old to try and prevent death at his age is to wear a seatbelt. Right. <laughs> Good point. And so injuries. And then there's um, uh, lung conditions whether that's emphysema or pneumonia, and those are the leading causes of death. Well, you know what, as far as driving, I'm gonna add the texting to that too. I was driving down the interstate the other day, and next door to me, there was a person driving about 70, and they were texting. <laughs> uh, that, that's probably not very safe. I, I, I strongly encourage so against I'm, that. Yeah, I'm a, so, the are, so, so what can you do early on to help maybe lower the risk of having a heart attack since it's the number one cause of death? The leading risk factors are being a man, okay. getting older, smoking, high cholesterol, diabetes, high blood pressure, family history, and activity. And so when you look at it, there's something that I'm sure you're familiar with, yeah. Framingham Heart Data. Mm -hmm. And you can go online and plug in your risk factors to know what your risks of having a heart attack in the next 10 years would be. That's the type of things that we would look at. We would screen for diabetes. We'd check your blood pressure. We'd check your uh, body mass index. Uh, look at those things and try and give you some suggestions. Most physicians don't want you to be on medication. They just know that medication may be helpful for you in trying to prevent a problem. Uh, if at all possible, try and take care of it without medicines. So you mentioned earlier that earlier in your life you were an educator. Sounds like you still are an educator. Uh, actually, that's what a physician is supposed to mean as a teacher. Yeah. <laughs> So, so sometimes just making someone aware that they're at high risk can maybe let them know, hey, i got to do something or something catastrophic might happen. Absolutely. And do it before. As you know, for heart disease, when you have a heart attack, that portion of the heart dies. You mm -hmm. never recapture that. Okay. If you can help prevent that from happening, you'll be happier, healthier, and uh, be able to live longer. Yeah, you know, we were going to talk about PSA. We're going to start that, but we don't have much time. We'll finish after the break. Is, is a PSA a useful test? And what is PSA first? Let's talk about that first. Okay. PSA is a blood work. They can draw your labs, and it's ca uh, called prostate-specific antigen. Unfortunately, there's several things that can cause your PSA to, PSA to be elevated. Um, it's not specific to prostate cancer. So prostate cancer is very prevalent, but many people will die with it, not from it. Okay. Um, I've heard it estimated up to 95% of 95-year-olds will have prostate cancer, but it doesn't cause any problems. So should you do anything about it, that becomes the question. And it is controversial as to whether you should do the PSA and We'll probably talk about that a little bit yeah, further after you know, the break. We're going to talk more about that after the break. In fact, I ordered it last week and I got a nasty letter from the insurance company saying they weren't going to pay for it. Well, stay with us. Good chance to go to the bathroom. Hope your prostate's doing well. We're going to talk more about it after the break. I'm here with Dr. Dennis Thompson. Stay with us. The Heart of Health Live will return in just a moment. for modern medicine, but that's not enough. There's a place for lifestyle, but that's not enough. 
The real truth in medicine, the real truth in healing comes from that relationship with the Heavenly Father. That relationship can show us the balance. When to use modern medicine, when to use lifestyle, and to use it for the right reasons. Well, this book gives the solution to the healthcare dilemma. It answers the question, why am I sick? How do I get better? And how can I have ultimate healing? finding ways to keep kids active and healthy. Works every time. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov. Have you ever heard things about God that didn't make sense? Have you ever thought that science and scripture cannot be reconciled? Have you heard ideas about God that scare you? Or are you just tired and confused? If you want answers to complex problems, if you want a testable, evidence-based understanding of God and the world around you, an understanding in which the Bible and science harmonize to reveal the reality that God is love all the time. Then Come and Reason Ministries is for you. Hi, I'm Dr. Tim Jennings, board certified psychiatrist, and Come and Reason Ministries is dedicated to helping you learn to discern, to stimulate you to think, to help hone and refine your ability to know the right from the wrong, the healthy from the unhealthy, and teach you how to experience healing of your mind body and relationships here and now. If you would like an evidence-based approach to knowing God, then visit us online at comeandreason.com. You've got questions, we've got answers on the Heart of Health Live. Welcome back. You know, it's interesting that, you know, years and years ago, the Greek Aristotle thought that all reasoning occurred from the heart. And many doctors of that era thought that the heart was the place where you thought. They proved that wrong. As late as George, George Washington, they put leeches on him. And if you, if you wouldn't put leeches on your patients back then, you weren't a good doctor. In the 30s, they were giving um, cigarettes to people with asthma. If you didn't do that, you weren't a good doctor. So you sometimes wonder, Dr. Thompson, what history will look back on us and whether we're good doctors by what we're doing. We talked about PSA, so would, would you ever order a PSA? I ordered one on, on a fellow the other day, just as a screening test. No family history, mm -hmm. um, nothing, and it came back normal. We all felt good, okay? But, but you know, the re it's always shifting these recommendations. So in your practice, you know, I'm not saying anyone else's, but who might you order it for? Well, if there's a strong family hif history of prostate cancer or in African American men, the incidence of prostate cancer is indeed higher. Okay. And so it would be reasonable. What I do is I sit down with the gentleman at about 45 and I start asking him, are you having any problems? Do you get up and go to the bathroom several times each night? Do you have to stand and wait and wait and wait? It doesn't right. feel like you can ever empty your bladder. Anything that would cause an obstruction to urinating or, or going number one. Right. Um, if they don't have any of those symptoms, right now the United States Preventive Task Force and the American Academy of Family Practice says do not okay. do a PSA. Now the American Cancer Society and the American Urologic Society say that you should. Yeah. <laughs> so I sit down and I talk with men because it, at sooner or later in their lifetime they will have a prostate cancer. That, that's the odds. Back in the 80s we did prostate cancer screening on everybody. Mm -hmm. We did a digital rectal exam and a PSA and certainly we found more cancers. Unfortunately, people didn't live longer. Um, sometimes the treatment for the prostate cancer includes impotence and um, you, urinary incontinence, you can't hold your water. Uh, and so there was a trend to do more harm than good. However, if you've been in the practice of medicine very long, you have seen men with prostate cancer that has metastasized and spread, and that's certainly not what we want. Um, so what I do is I talk with my men, and then I discuss whether they have any symptoms, and I will do a PSA from time to time, but I don't do it on a yearly basis. Okay. 
So I guess I, I straddle the fence a little bit. <laughs> no, I think that's a reasonable approach, and I think the verdict is still not out on many of these screening tests. You know, I really, one of the ones I really wish we had one is I wish we had a good screening test for ovarian cancer. Yes. You know, I wish we had that. You know, that comes up on a regular basis. But, you know, we have good screening tests for colonoscopy. We can look at the skin to see if you have a funny lesion, and that should be done regularly by yes. everybody. Yes. And I tell people about the ABCDs of skin cancer. If it's asymmetric, if you can't fold it in half like you would fold your hands together, mm -hmm. and that could be a warning sign. B is the border. Okay. Is it irregular border? C is color. If it's black and shiny, it scares me. You're right. Or if it's changing, is it bleeding? Is it ulcerating? And D is diameter bigger than the size of a pencil eraser. So with that mnemonic, I hand that to them and then they can help me screen for skin cancers. Well, you know, I, I don't do good hearing stuff the first time. So let's go over that one more time about skin cancers. A, asymmetry. Okay. B, border. Okay. C, color, which is, would be a dark color, or changing. And D, is diameter bigger than the size of a pencil eraser. Okay. And border, what do you mean on, by that? Irregular. It's okay. kind of like it's growing roots. Okay. If it's very, very clean, that's reassuring. And this does not diagnose skin no. cancer. It could just potentially be warning signs. So if you see that on your skin, let a, a qualified practitioner have a look at it and say, oh, don't worry about it. It's a seborrheic keratosis, and you're going to get more of those. Now, do you screen for rare type cancers like testicular cancer and things of that nature? Actually, testicular cancer is the most common cancer in young. Okay. But there is no good evidence-based medicine that's screening for testicular cancer because Testicular cancer is caught at an early stage, typically. So you'd find that on an exam, right? Well, you could okay. find it on an exam. By self-exam. By self-exam. And know. that's what recommend. If you have one testicle that's of different size, um, you would, and it, or if it's firm, yeah. be sure to let somebody look at it. I had a guy once that said it felt like a rock, gravel. Yes. So it felt gravel. It's quite firm if you've ever felt a testicular cancer. Yeah. And, you know, nowadays that's another good reason for, you know, if there's something specific for a doctor to check it. And, you know, I know they do ultrasounds and things like that. So yeah. I think that's very good information, Dr. Thompson. Um, we're going to come back after break and we're going to talk about other types of healing. Um, there's a question that's coming on manipulation. And when, when that, by that, you know, there's a lot of people practicing that. I think it's going to be interesting to talk to. Um, for future programs, if you have a question for Dr. Thompson, we're going to bring him back again. And you can just send in your question to our website. That's heartwiseministries.org. We're going to get a very balanced answer. We still have a chance to fit in a few more phone calls at 855-644-3278. After the break, we're going to talk about manipulation. So stay with us. Heart of Health Live will return in just a moment. I'm Dr. James Markham, and I talk to patients every day who want to know the truth in healthcare. On our website, heartwiseministries.org, you can have your questions answered. You can read my blog where I talk about interesting and controversial subjects in medicine. You might choose to go to the radio or television sections and learn more about all sorts of health topics. Take the time and go to heartwiseministries.org. So here's a question. If you love Jesus, and I mean truly love him, people will notice, right? I mean, if Jesus is at the center of everything you do, people will have to notice. And that is exactly what Life Talk is all about. You see, at Life Talk, our goal has always been to connect people to the true source of power, Jesus Christ. We know with Jesus at the center of our lives, nothing is impossible. for modern medicine, but that's not enough. There's a place for lifestyle, but that's not enough. The real truth in medicine, the real truth in healing comes from that relationship with the Heavenly Father. That relationship can show us the balance. When to use modern medicine, when to use lifestyle, and to use it for the right reasons. Well, this book gives the solution to the healthcare dilemma. It answers the question, why am I sick? 
how do I get better, and how can I have ultimate healing? In the small town of Elmira, New York, a boy was born into an all-American family. The odds of him achieving his dream in the fashion industry? One in 23 million. The odds of having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 88. I am Tommy Hilfiger, and my family is affected by autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. You've got questions, we've got answers on the Heart of Health Live. Welcome back. Well, I know everyone's enjoyed having Dr. Dennis Thompson with us tonight. And I've learned a lot from him and we got just a few minutes left, but we're gonna talk a little bit about a question that came in. It says, when might manipulation be used as a medical treatment? I know some doctors are trained in that, others are not. Well, as an osteopath, I have training in manipulation, but actually before that, I went to chiropractic college and practiced as a chiropractor. So you can answer this question. So um, the two main schools that teach manipulation. Manipulation can be very helpful. In my experience, it works very well for mid-back pain, pain between the shoulders, neck pain and headaches, and low back pain. And the literature supports that. Um, if you can mobilize the joints of the spine, it allows healing and uh, muscle relaxation to occur. Um, Manipulation, in my opinion, however, and I have been to both of the schools, is not the panacea that sometimes it's purported to be. Um, you want to be sure that you're diagnosing the appropriate medical conditions and not just ignoring the symptoms at times. And chiropractors, I understand what their training is because I graduated from a chiropractic college and they are professionals. Um, osteopaths are actually currently work alongside with medical MDs or medical doctors and many of them don't do manipulation which I don't understand because I use it on a almost right. daily basis. Well that's good here you know and out there there's many different types of healing and a lot comes from the heart of the healer so investigate them learn all you can. Um, we want to thank you for joining us and if you want more information or to watch this program again you can go to our website that's heartwiseministries.org We'd like to thank our production crew with Michael Bell, our producer, Heidi Bell, who helped with makeup, and our call team of Gina and Linda, Jake, who's run the floor, Kelly, who's working back on our graphics, and Nathan, who's doing audio. We also want to thank you for joining us today. But more than that, we want to thank our Creator, God, who gives us the ultimate chance of having perfect healing. Join us each week on Heart of Health Live. Go to our website, HeartWise Ministry, or be a Facebook friend. Until next week, I'm Dr. James Markham, thanking Dr. Dennis Thompson for being with us. Hope you can come again. Thank you for having me. Well, thanks for joining us. We're going to be back next time. Let me just talk for a few minutes.